What is that YouTube password? We haven't put anything out in like six months. Everyone in Canada, everyone in Canada hates Steve's tight shirts. Oh, that worked. Fuck yeah. It worked. We're in. Let's make a movie. All right, let me introduce you all to the new Troy 102, a non-restricted semi-automatic 308 rifle that you need in your collection. I'm Steve with The Shooting Edge, and we are finally back with another YouTube video because I gotta pay my rent. The Troy 102 is one of the most anticipated rifles to come along in the Canadian gun market in a long time. I imagine that's partly because Troy has teased us with computer renderings of the rifle, insert here, Wyatt, for months and months and months now. Um, as well, like you guys, I want to see Troy's take on the 102. Troy is known for designing accurate, reliable guns, so I was very curious to see if it lived up to the hype. We don't really have time for a history lesson right now, but for those who are new to the channel or new to the Canadian gun market, it's worth knowing that NEA was the first company to submit the 102 to the RCMP as an entry in the non-restricted category. As the 102 design was independent of the AR-15 and based on the Armalite 102, which predates the AR-15, there was no sense in making it restricted because it wasn't compatible, it didn't fall into the same category. So that's how they got around the restricted classification with this guy. Okay, let's take a look at the specifications of the Troy 102. Now, this little guy here is chambered in 308 Winchester. It has a billet machined upper and lower receiver. That's this part here. Our operating system is a semi-automatic gas operated rotating bolt. Our magazine capacity is gonna be five rounds because we are in Canada after all. Uh, it does come with one metal magazine, which is nice, but it will take the uh, Magpul P mags, if you guys already have those in your collection. Ugh. Moving down here, we have a 20 inch SOCOM match barrel. Our muzzle device is called the MK11 Mod 1. It's basically just a bird cage. Can you see it? Over here in the caboose of the rifle is the Troy Battle Axe six position stock. Have you opened these up before? No. There you go. Okay, so it has this funky look to it because it is known as, I don't know, like the Buick of the gun world in terms of like storage space in the trunk. Running back here to the fore end, this is the 15 inch Troy handguard with the M-lock feature. So all the different rails and accessories you wanna to add to it, you can, lots of options depending on the use. Right over here, the Troy USGI M, that's a mouthful. Uh, the Troy USGI M4A1 military pistol grip. So your bolt carrier group in here is just your standard Troy eh, 308 bolt carrier group. That's what that guy is. We threw our own Night Force optic on it. That is not included in the box. Speaking of which, Wyatt, should we talk about what's in the box? <laughs> so your $1,800 Troy 102 comes in a cardboard box with some foam. Now, inside the box, it does not look like this. Um, it is actually in two pieces. So you have the upper separated from the lower. Uh, and of course, it doesn't come with a scope or anything like that. But what it does come with is one metal magazine one Troy Industries cable lock, one AR-102 uh, instruction manual that none of us are actually gonna read, let's be real. Uh, plastic, more foam, more foam. That's it, that's it. So now that we've talked about the rifle, Let's take it to the gun range and see how it performs. Follow me, dudes. Ah! 
We are done test firing the Troy 102. It was put on the lead sled. We shot at just 50 yards just to test it and see the groupings. For those curious, we did place on top a Night Force 5.5 to 22 by 56 scope. NX, NX, NXS, NSX, Accurate NSX, Night Force NX, whatever. So we shot three different types of 308 Winchester ammunition through the rifle to check reliability. We made sure they were all different grains. Grain is bullet weight. I'm gonna start with the Federal Premium. This is a 168 grain boat tail hollow point match grade ammo. This is the most expensive of the bunch. The scope was sighted in for this ammunition, which probably explains why this one was overly accurate. But we had a nice grouping at 50 yards, all holes touching, no complaints there. Which is what you would expect from match grade ammo, I suppose. Cool, cool. And you'll show through close-ups of the targets? Yeah. Oh, that's that. awesome. We'll grab that after the fact. Does that cost me extra for the video? Yeah. Ooh. Um, can we maybe skip that and just zoom in from here? Yeah, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the grouping wasn't bad. It obviously shot a little bit low because it was super heavy, so gravity pulled it down, I guess. I'm not really sure how science works. Uh, we did have one flyer. That was my own fault. I pulled a little bit too hard. My bad, I am no sniper. Last on the list was the super light PMC uh, 147 grain full metal jacket boat tail. Now this grouping is atrocious and because he's not here, I'll tell you guys right now, Eddie shot this grouping because he said he could outshoot me. And you can publish this in the video because he's not here to say anything. Zoom in on that one, I'll pay extra for that. Let's go over some of the things that I liked about the rifle, some things I didn't like, and then we'll do the whole final thoughts verdict type thing. I like that it is non-restricted. Obviously, I like that. I like that I can take this outside. I can shoot coyotes or watermelons or whatever I want, really. I mean, 308 is a pretty universal round. That's pretty cool. Now, I also liked, and I found that a big pro to this guy is the accuracy. And I know you guys are gonna harp on me because we only shot at 50 yards and yeah, you can probably group a 22 at 50 yards. Um, but some of my friends have also shot this and they got fairly good groupings out to 300. So I'm still gonna go with it's accurate. Reliable, this thing is reliable for sure. Now that's not to say we didn't have any hiccups because we did, but I'm still gonna tell you it's reliable. Now the hiccup we found was with lighter ammunition. So, the 147 grain PMC didn't seem to cycle quite as good as the heavier loads. That meant failure to extract here and there. I mean, realistically, we ran into the problem, I think, once or twice. That's it. So I'm still going to say reliable. Check. And then might put a check mark here. I didn't put a whole lot of ammo through this guy. Like, I want to say maybe 200 rounds total were put through it because we did have to sight in the scope, we did play with it, I did lend it to some employees, but I would not consider it to be broken in in the traditional sense. So perhaps that'll change over time and it'll feed and cycle lighter uh, grain ammunition without any problem. I don't know, we will see. You guys let me know, leave a comment below. Can you follow my finger with paint when I go cons? Uh, and there's a way to do that. That's gonna cost me more money, isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, cons, things that I did not like that much. As a whole, I would venture to guess this package is like 12 plus pounds. You're not gonna go out in the bush and sling this over your shoulder and hunt deer or something like that. It's just too heavy, it's a workout. In fact, Wyatt, do you have a protein shake or something to quench the thirst? You do. Cost of ammo. Yeah, 308 is not cheap to shoot by any means. In fact, we went through some of the ammo I had on hand, just my own personal stash, please, God, let them reimburse me for this stuff. <laughs> um, but 308 ain't cheap, so you're not gonna be plugging uh, gophers with this thing anytime soon, I guarantee that. Unless you're rich and invite me to come with you. Oh, the stock. Okay, I took special note of the stock, the battle axe stock. So it's called a battle axe because that's exactly what it looks like. And I guess that's the intention in case you run out of ammunition. Now, I don't like the Troy Battle Axe stock. I think it looks a little bit goofy. And if this were my rifle, that would probably be the first thing that I replace and change. Like I mentioned earlier, it does have that fun feature where you can open it up 
and you can put anything you want in there. I mean, uh, you can hide another 102, another scope, uh, 8,000 rounds of ammunition. I'm sure it will all fit. So my final thoughts on this guy are, are leaning towards positive for sure. Um, I don't have a lot of complaints about the rifle. I mean, in terms of, of a modern hunting rifle with the modular capabilities of an AR-15, you're not gonna find anything better than this right now. You can pick this up and it is exactly the same really, like it feels the same. So if you're good with that, you'll be good with this. Despite it being 308, it is relatively tame to shoot. So I did find that as another bonus to it. Um, it was loud and I don't think you wanna be beside anybody while they shoot it, but as a, as a shooter, I didn't really mind it that much. I mean, the weight kind of kept the muzzle down and it didn't kick me in the shoulder as hard as I expected it to, so. Going into this, I had sort of been taught to expect that we might face some issues because of this weird rumor that out of the box, these things did not cycle. I didn't have that problem, I didn't. That's the truth. I don't make money by saying that. I honestly had no problems. I would, I would rate this guy eight out of 10 BCL 102s. Can I say that? Can I say that? Is that gonna offend people? I'm gonna put this gun down for just 10 seconds and thank you guys as our viewers for all of your support. I know we don't put videos out as often as we should or as often as you would like, but we're gonna try and change that. I just got back from TACOM in Toronto, which is Canada's largest gun show, and I had a, an overwhelming amount of support surrounding these videos. I mean, I had people I'd never seen before in my life thank me for doing these videos. So I promise because of people like that, because of people like you that are watching this, the ones that thumbs up this, not thumb down this, um, I will make more videos. I promise you this year, I will make a ton more videos. There's already two more in the works. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time. There's a trigger pull gauge. Don't you move, YouTube people. Eddie, do you have a trigger pull gauge? My God, where is it? That's exactly seven pounds. Seven pounds. A crisp seven pound trigger pull. My God, that's heavy.